Right guys, hello, welcome back to another video on Project Wingman. As promised, come back to cover the Conquest mode. As always, I'll break the video down with timestamps, help you find what you want to see. We'll explain what Conquest mode really is. We'll go into the hangar, we'll see all the planes that are available for us to buy and fly, and we'll talk about the loadouts and the weapons, help you understand that. And then we'll do some VR gameplay, let you see me play the mode. I can explain how you can read the HUD, the head-up display, just give you some general gameplay tips to help you guys along so let's get on with it what is the conquest mode well the game has no multiplayer yes there's the campaign the story but once you've played that you're probably not going to want to do it again you know the story so that brings us over to the conquest mode to the right saying there's a game in progress it says controlled region 0 of 43 there's 43 regions i want to try and take control of but i've only got one life to do it think of it as 43 random missions that progressively get harder and harder uh, so yeah, if I die, we have to start all over again, which sounds a little bit harsh. However, you can see I've got 55,000 prestige points. I'm earning these points as I play, but I keep them when I die. And we use the prestige points to unlock more planes. And it remembers the planes that we've unlocked. So the more we play it, the more we have at our disposal, the easier it gets. So let's start a new game so you can see the options. To the left, we've got the modifiers. So difficulty, easy, normal, hard or mercenary. I'll just keep it on normal. I'm doing live commentary. That's hard enough to talk and play at the same time. Don't need to make it any harder on myself. I've got the alert modifier, how quickly the alert level will ramp up. There are achievements for the game. A couple of them are to get to alert level 10 and alert level 20. So if you want to rush that achievement, get there sooner, you can bump up how quickly the alert level increases. That's up to you. To the right, we've got the game modifiers. This is just for replayability to add some extra challenge when we get very comfortable with the game mode. So there's a few examples. Glass cannon, we deal 2.5 times damage towards enemies. However, on the flip side, they do five times the amount of normal damage back to us. So we can get blown up pretty quickly. The speed demon there, the afterburner is stuck on. We'll be doing full speed all of the time. Budget cuts, 2.5 damage goes both ways. However, ammo is significantly reduced and handling is moderately reduced. There's gun runner there, secondary gun only, but we get three times the amount of gun ammo. Camouflage, enemy indicator no longer appears unless they are targeted. So we can just turn these on uh, to give us a bit more of a challenge. We'll press play, it's going to bring us into the hangar, and then we can have a look at all of the planes available. So these are real jets, they don't use their real name to avoid trademark and copyright issues. Each one has uh, different stats, different specs. I'm not sure that's as important as the actual loadout, the weapons that they can carry. We'll talk about that after we've looked at them. So it, it looks like there's quite a lot of jets. However, some are repeated as having different variants. When we first start out, we have the trainer jets. We have the T-21, which is a MiG-21, the trainer variant. You want to get, get off these pretty, pretty soon. Save up your prestige points and buy yourself a better aircraft. The TF4 Mark 1 looks an awful lot like the F4 Phantom. There's many, many variations of the Phantom Jet. So we'll go back. So again, another MiG-21 Mark 1. So another variant. I think this one carries better bombs than the trainer. Got the SV-37 Mark 1. Now many of us will know this as the Saab Vigan. This is most likely the first jet that you will want to buy with your prestige points. It's very good air to air. It's got air to ground options that are also equally good. We've got anti-ship missiles, semi-active air to air, multi-lock air to air, multi-lock air to ground. Plenty of options. Really, really good jet. So uh, yeah, keep that in mind for when you're first starting out. FE4 Mark 1, lo and behold, another F4 Phantom just have a different loadout different weapons it can take on board fc-16 mark one the f-16 fighting falcon also known as a viper quite an old school jet but yeah still looks pretty sexy by today's standards got the sk-25u mark one so this is a russian plane known as the frogfoot it is Russia's equivalent of the A-10 Warthog, the tank killer. This has a 20mm cannon, the A-10 has a 30mm. They basically serve the same role. They fly in the air and they blow up stuff 
on the ground. Uh, so keep this in mind for those air to ground missions. I will point out if you enjoy this game, it's quite arcadey, but if you want to get into simulators, the DCS world and the Frogfoot is one of the free planes that they offer with the base game. So if you want to try it out in VR in the cockpit and have all the gauges and all the all the toys work, um, check out DCS world. It's pretty cool. So we'll move on to the next plane. MG31 Mark 1, the MiG-31, codenamed Foxbat, Air Superiority Fighter. FD-14 Mark 1, F-14 Tomcat. I fly this in DCS World, I bought the module, absolutely love the plane, big fan of Top Gun back in the day. But even in this game, Project Wingman, the wings do sweep back as we go into afterburner and they come forward as we slow down. You can see that over your shoulder as you look out the cockpit. It's a pretty cool jet. It's got some um, pretty decent options for the weapons loadout. We'll talk about that a little bit later. MG-29 Mark One, the MiG-29 Fulcrum. It's pretty old school, but still a sexy looking plane. The Soviets. Excipiter Mark 1. Now being British, I know this as the Harrier. Jump jet. Fairly certain United States Marines used these back in the day as well. The Harrier is a type of hawk, a bird. So is the Excipiter. Excipit pie, I think, is the Latin name for the genus uh, of hawks that the Harrier was in. So that's, I see what they've done there. It's kind of clever to get around the naming issues. This is more of a air to ground roll. FE-18, the FA-18 Hornet. This is a very popular module in DCS world. If you've seen Behind Enemy Lines with Owen Wilson, this is uh, what he was in when he was shot down. FC-15 Mark One, a 15 Strike Eagle. Multi-role fighter for air-to-air, air-to-ground operations. SK-27 Mark I of a Russian jet, Sukhoi-27, the flanker. It's quite cool looking. It's on to the SK-37. Also the Sukhoi-37, the flanker F variant, nicknamed Terminator. It's quite cool in that paint job. So the FS-15 Mark I, if it will select it. Basically a Strike Eagle, the F-15 with a body kit on it. The VX-23 Mark I. Looks an awful lot like the F-22 Raptor, except it's got some extra wings right at the front. It's a modern US jet. So you see there's another MiG-21 there, the Mark II, and another Exhibitor. I, I don't need to show those. Uh, as I said, some jets have been repeated. But what we do want to talk about is that they do have different specs, but it's, it's more to do with the weapons. So as we look at the F-14, it's got HISM, high speed missiles, or high impact, sorry. Uh, they will do more damage but it takes longer to get to the target. HVSM is high velocity. They will get to the target quicker, but do less damage. They are multi-purpose missiles, They're air to air or air to ground. It's got anti-air options, multi-lock air to air. It's got semi-active uh, anti-air missiles. Uh, it's also got bombs as well. So it's a yeah, pretty good all round jet, but let's have a look at our SV-37. I'm gonna use this for the playthrough. So to the left, we can select our loadout for the pylons on hard points. So I've always got standard missiles. And now I'm gonna pick my extra loadout. So I don't want any more standard missiles, but I could have an anti-ship missile, high damage, able to pierce through the airships or the ships on the ocean. You get eight shots with that missile. And we've got the anti-air category. So there's a multi-lock anti-air missiles, get 36 of those or I can go with the semi-active air missiles. They do high damage, they track well. The downside is I need to keep the target locked, keep my nose on it, help that missile find the target. 
You can reach out from a long distance, but I'm vulnerable as I need to keep the target painted. So we'll take one of those to show how they work. Uh, we've got the anti-ground option, multi-lock anti-ground missiles, which the Tomcat can't carry. So yeah, you can see this jet is pretty cool. Uh, so let's go for the multi-lock air to air. We've got module selection flares. That's the SP module button we bound in the settings for the controls. That's my countermeasures to help me defeat the missiles being fired at me. We've got a number of color schemes for the jet, which unlocked when I purchased it. Blue there. I think we'll go with color scheme two. So I'm happy with that. It's giving me a quick overview, standard missiles, SAA, MLAA, and flares. That'll do me. We'll now load into the map as we need to pick a region we're going to invade. Every time we play, the missions are randomized. So Beaver Bay is saying most wanted, destroy all priority targets to complete the mission. We'll get Cordium Source 4 and a bonus payout of 4,000 credits. As I'm in VR, I still need to use the mouse. I'm going to hold down the right mouse button and use the mouse to navigate around and have a look at these red sections that we can invade. So Acid Coast, Objective, most wanted, destroy all priority targets. Again, we'll get some Cordium Source and 4,000 credits. Got City 29, anti-air defense suppression, destroy all priority targets to complete the mission. Cordium Source, bonus payout. Jorgen's Peak, transport hunt, destroy all priority targets. That gives us 4,000 credits, but no Cordium Source. So let's do that whilst we're here. We can see there's a, a hiring den. It's going to be difficult for me to select. It's that yellow dot that's where I'm looking to select with the pointer. There we go. So Jorgen's Peak, there's the hiring den. So when I've got credits, I can build up my air fleet. There's Talon, Blaze, Luna, Ace, Elite Ace, Elite War Hero. It shows me how many I can have of each. The more experienced the pilots are, the more it costs to hire them. There's airships that need credits, as well as those Cordium resources. Once I have any airships, I can upgrade them with Cordium and credits. So the mission is going to get harder and harder and harder. If I give myself some allies, some wingmen, it's going to make my life easier. We see alert level zero. First level should be pretty easy. We've done our loadout management. We've picked our jet. It says in the bottom left what we've got. So let's do the sortie. Let's start the mission. I'm just going to nudge forward on my throttle so we've got some airspeed. We don't want to stall in the air. As I'm in VR, I'm just forced into the cockpit. It's the only view I will have, much like in Star Wars Squadrons. If you're playing a monitor, you do get two internal views and one external. Let me explain the cockpit layout. So every jet will have a different cockpit and where the radar is situated will change. None of the instruments work, but it's the radar we want to keep an eye on or use the button we bound to bring up the map, which expands the radar for us. Let's explain the HUD, the head-up display in front of me. So at the top, we've got the compass, north, south, east and west. It says 057, that's my heading. So zero would be north, 180 would be 180 degrees. Behind me, that would be south. To the left, SPD is speed. As we go faster, the number is going to increase. To the right is the altimeter. My height, now Angel 16, 16,000 feet. Below that, it says FLR. My flares are ready. If I put the SP module button, they deploy to counter missiles. And I've got a six second countdown before can deploy them again. In the bottom left, we've got the gun. That's my rounds. They deplete as I pull the trigger. Hull is my health. That's at 100. The bottom right, we have the pylons, the hard points. I've got the standard missiles selected. There's two vertical bars that shows they're both ready to fire. So it says two. It says there's two ready to fire. We've got 182, the number of missiles in storage. It's unrealistic, but it's an arcade game. So as I fire, we see those go to black bars and they gradually refill. And that zero will then go to one, now two, when they're both ready to fire. We've dropped down to 180 in the stores. 
So if I want to pick a target, I center it in my view and put the cycle target button. Now I'm going to fire the semi-active air to air. I'm going to reach out a good distance. I've got to keep him painted. This target destroyed. Let's look for some more priority targets. I've got the multi-lock. I need to deploy my flares. That beeping is telling me the missile is coming in. The more it beeps, the closer it's getting. Another missile. Target destroyed. Now my neck won't thank me for it, but ideally we ought to always keep the target in our sights and use the joystick to move the nose of the jet on target. Finish him off with guns. Multiple fast movers coming in, MiG-21s, so multi-lock missiles away. The warning is letting me know they're trying to get a lock on me. We've got one destroyed. The other's going defensive. Clipped him with the guns. Let's try and finish him off. Right, missile away. I should get him. Target destroyed. Radar to check my six. Target destroyed. I like to keep the flares available as I'm trying to keep that target locked. It is possible to jink the missiles. We can just change our heading, change our altitude, keep moving to defeat the missiles. Try and get him with guns. Target destroyed. Guns, guns, guns. Alright, I want these red dots is what I want to complete the mission. So we'll leave these guys. these priority targets. It's not them, it would say priority. There we go. Semi-active missile away. Target destroyed. Right, let's look for the next targets. Flares away. You can see the red dots on the radar, they are the missiles coming in for me. Let's get into a bit of a fur ball, there's a lot of bandits up here after me. Here's our priority targets. Flares are ready. I'll keep this CT-17 painted. If missiles come in, I'll deploy flares. 
this all the way. Switch to standing missiles. Two of those away. Try and get him guns as well. Target destroyed. Here are the priority targets. F-14 Tomcats. best to keep my eye on them all the time. Got a jink away from this missile. Alright, good hits on target. Defeated those as well. Keep him painted, target destroyed. Guns, target destroyed. Missile is on the bay. Try for guns. These F 14s, so where are these Tomcats? There he is. Keep him locked. There's a weight. Mission complete. So now I have some credits, I'll be able to hire some allies. 
didn't get any cordium, so I won't be able to get any airships. We can see we've got some more regions available. So GA23, score attack, score. 3,750 points to complete the mission. Not strictly speaking true. I uh, would then have to deal with another squadron of jets coming in. But you get the idea, guys. So I think we can leave it there. Have a great day. Have a great evening. Whatever you choose to do after watching this. And as always, I shall see you when I see you next. Ciao for now.